Welcome to the channel. I got my log splitter out. I want to split some firewood today. So about a month ago, I cut down some oak trees. I just wanted to thin out. They're kind of in my way. And I cut the logs up into eight foot sections. When I go to cut them for firewood into 16 inches, I don't have any waste. So I wanted to make a gauge for the chainsaw so I know exactly where 16 inches is. So I've seen other videos where guys would make a gauge go on their chainsaw bar. So I like the idea. So I wanted to see what I had laying around the shop I could make mine out of. Let me show you what I did. For a magnet, I had a car speaker. They come out of an old car door. And what I'm using for the gauge is this is just one of these fiberglass driveway markers. And what I originally was going to use was a piece of plastic conduit. So I started using a hole saw. Then I thought that's just going to be too much weight out here. So I happened to find an old driveway marker in the barn. And the backside, it had this raised up area. I ground that all flush, so now it's got a nice flat surface. When I drilled this hole, it was a little bit underside from this fiberglass rod, so then I just turned this on the end of the bench grinder, put a little bit of a bevel to it. I hammered it in there, it's nice and tight, and then the excess on the backside ground it off. And it seems to stick pretty good on this bar. Let's fire this chainsaw up, see how it works. All right, that homemade gauge works pretty good. And it doesn't matter what side of the bar you use. Just depends which end of the log you want to cut from. It's nice and secure on there. It doesn't move around, doesn't slide. So the best part is it didn't cost me anything. It's just some stuff I had laying around the shop. I'm going to get the log splitter going. We'll bust some of this wood up. This log splitter here my dad built. Now I'm thinking he finished it about 1987, 1988. So roughly 35 years ago. I did a video on this probably four years ago and showed it. Uh, and it's been a while. I thought, well, since I'm using it, I'm going to do another video on it. All this metal for this framework and axles is everything that he had laying around. I don't think he bought a piece of steel to build this out of, other than he bought the hydraulic cylinders and pumps and all that stuff, the engine. Everything else was just stuff that he'd scrounged up. He even made his own front axle there. It's got kingpin bushings in there. It pivots in the center here, so that's all homemade. It's got a 10 horse Tecumseh engine on it, electric start. And this drive mechanism, he found this at a garage sale, and I think the people told him it was part of an old antique garden tractor. Well, he bought it and knew he could use it for something. He made it to power this. Now, the company runs a hydraulic pump that runs a hydraulic motor. The motor turns this differential assembly, and he's got these shafts that run down here, chain and sprocket drive. He made his own hydraulic tank. A lot of stuff come from garage sales. I think this old tractor seat coming from a garage sale. The steering mechanism is really something. That there, if I remember right, that's an old Porsche steering box, and he had that in his garage for years and years. It was there when I was a kid in the 60s. Somebody had, probably had it laying around, and he took it, but it actually turned the wrong way for how the steering worked, so he rigged up this chain drive to it so it turns the correct way. That was kind of an engineering feat. 
And the wedge he uses, since my dad was a machinist, the tip off that wedge will come out of here, and that's a piece of hardened steel. He, he treated that himself, and after about 35 years of use, it's still nice and sharp, and it's cut through nails and fencing wire that's been in trees. Never had to take it off and sharpen it. It's been a good running machine. I think he had maybe a couple of bugs he worked out of it within the first year. After that, it's never had a breakdown. Just normal maintenance, change of engine oil, hydraulic oil, filters once in a while. There's there's no hour meter on it. I would guess there's probably two to 3,000 hours on this machine. So I'm gonna fire this thing up. I'll show you how it moves around on its own power and it will split some wood. He even built a little holder to hold a little hatchet here because every once in a while you get a log that's going to be kind of stringy so you got a hatchet handy here to cut some of those strands and one interesting thing he's got dual controls here the log lift and the splitter you can control from standing here or up here in the operator seat and i think the reason he did that so he could have my mom do all the work down there while he'd sit on the seat and smoke cigarettes Okay, after about 35 years, this log splitter still works good, runs great, and this gauge works out real handy. Saves a lot of time in measuring these logs to cut them up. So I hope you like this video. Thanks for watching.